So this is a little embarrassing. I was playing with the NativeScript modal dialog APIs for iOS, and I just discovered a feature that was already there for a few versions, and I didn't even know about it. Hmm, I guess I should hit the API documentation again and go over it with a fine tooth comb. All right, anyway, today I'm gonna show you an interesting transition that I found for showing up the modal dialogs in iOS. That's coming right up. Hey everybody, this is Alex from nativescripting.com where we have full advanced NativeScript courses. We have NativeScript Core Pro, NativeScript Angular Pro, and NativeScript View Pro that's coming out soon. The Core and Angular courses are already out. There's a link down below with a coupon code, so if you want to beef up your NativeScript game and really learn that stuff inside out, check out the courses. Also, did you notice something different about me? I have a new shirt on. It's a long sleeve tee. I also have a hoodie. I'll show you that next time. And that's the iScript native hoodie and the iScript native long sleeve tee. For 2020, I created these on Teespring and I thought I'd do a little dog footing with the t-shirts before I announced them here because usually I've been disappointed when ordering printed t-shirts online. But surprisingly, these are really good. So this is a really soft material. It's next level. That's the name of the brand. It's not like it's the next level t-shirt. No, it's just the name of the brand, but they make really good stuff. And the hoodie that I got from them, from Teespring, is really good. I'll show you that next time as well. Very comfortable and soft. I thought instead of shipping these out to people one by one, I just make it available on Teespring and they can just sell it and order it and deliver it quickly to you. And it's just a little way that you can support this channel by buying some of those t-shirts and swag. And it's a pretty cool design. Hit me up in the comments if you want to know how to get that stuff. Anyway, back to my embarrassing story about modal dialogues. The reason I was looking at them in the first place is because in NativeScript 6.3, we have some new features that came to iOS modals that are really cool. They take advantage of iOS 13 and being able to resize modal dialogues to any size and also being able to dismiss them using a gesture instead of just a, like a close button, for example. I'll get into the gestures and the sizing in another video, but in this video, I wanted to show you one specific part of it and it's a part that's actually been available before, and this is the blurring up of the modal dialog instead of sliding it into place from the bottom. I'm gonna show you an iOS enum that you can use when you're setting up your options for the modal dialog. Let's do that now. All right, so we wanna open up a modal dialog in this application when we tap on this button here. I've already made it to change. Uh, this is the Hello World template from TypeScript, and there's the button and it has this on tap. Now, uh, usually this comes data bound to the view model, but I don't wanna do that. I wanna handle this on tap event in the code behind, and that's what we have here. I've created this function called on tap in the code behind file, and I'm grabbing the view that was tapped, which is the button itself, but it really doesn't matter. All we need from this view or any view is the show mode function that comes with any view. So you can call show modal from any view in NativeScript and pass in the required options to show modal dialog. What kind of modal options do we have here? So we have two overrides for show modal. We have one with module name, which is a string, and then modal options, which is a show modal options type. And then we have a view that we can actually create to show as a modal dialog. I'm gonna use this first option here just to make it simple. I'm gonna create a module here for the modal dialog and pass that in as a string. So let's do that. I'm gonna go here to the files and create modal.xml. So this is going to be our XML file for the modal. And then I'm going to have a code behind modal.ts. All right. So modal dialog can actually be structured the same way as a page. So I'm going to copy main page.xml, copy all this, paste it here. Modal doesn't have navigating to, but instead of that event, the first event we're going to handle is shown modally. So let's create shown modally. And I'm going to create a function called on shown modally. And just so that we can see a difference between the initial page and the modal dialog page, I'm going to add a background color here. Let's make it aqua. And um, let's see, let's delete the action bar. I'm going to delete this label down here. So I'm going to leave with this label that's going to say modal. And I'm going to leave a button that's going to close our modal. So I'm going to create that as a close button on tap close is what I'll call the handler. All right, so now we need to go to the modal.codebehind file and create a few things here. First is the onShownModally function. 
this is going to handle when that modal dialog is shown. And the type here is going to be special type for modal dialogs shown modally data. So that's going to be imported automatically for me from Visual Studio Code. We're going to come back to that in a second. And the second one is going to be on tap close, the second handler here. So export function on tap close. I don't really care about the args, the parameters that are passed in there. You'll see why in a minute. Now, when we first open up the modal dialog here, we call show modal, and then we need to pass in the module name, which is going to be a string. And we just called ours modal. So that'll be enough. The second parameter here is show modal options. So we need to create that const opts is of type show modal options. There we go. That gets auto imported up here. Now we need to pass in a context, but I don't have a context. The context is like um, your data that you're going to pass to the modal dialog. Since I don't care about that, I'm going to set that as null. And then we need a close callback. This is the function that's going to be called when the modal dialog is closed. So I just want to create a simple function that says modal closed. That's it. And I'm going to pass in these options right here. All right. So this close callback is what we need to call when we close the modal dialog. So back here in modal.ts, when we first show the modal dialog, args.close callback is going to be that callback that we pass in. By the way, args.context is the context that we can pass in, which is going to be our data, but we're not using that. So I'm going to just use the close callback and I need to save that off. So I'm going to have a variable outside of our function scope here. Let's call it close callback. And this is going to be a type of function. It's going to be undefined for now until we get here. So I'm going to say close callback and I'm going to save that off. And when we tap on the close button, I want to call close callback. All right, let's save everything and take a look. So here's the app. I'm going to move this here and I'm going to tap and it opens up the modal dialog. Good. Now the animation is just the default one and we'll change that in a second. And when I press close, nothing happens. And I found that this is an issue sometimes with HMR. So I'm going to go to my console and I have the app running here. I'm going to rebuild and restart the app. And this is not something I found that's a problem with just modal dialogues. Anytime I add a file here or a new module, I usually rebuild my app and restart it. All right, let's check this out. I'm going to press tap and the modal dialog opens. And when I press close, it closes and we get modal closed printed out to the console. So that works perfectly fine. Now, there is another option that we can add here when we open up the modal dialog, and that's iOS. So iOS is an object that has this property called presentation style. So I'm going to go ahead and open up that object and we can add presentation style. Now, notice it's of type any here in TypeScript, but right below in the comment, it says the UI modal presentation style to be used when showing the dialog in iOS. So this is a UI modal presentation type or an enum, which is iOS only. All right. Right. So we don't have to worry about this code running in an Android because this part will only be considered if we're running on iOS. So we don't need to have an extra if check if we're worried about Android or iOS. Now, the question is, what do we put in here in this presentation style? Because in TypeScript, it's a type any. And if you look up Apple's documentation for UI modal presentation style right here, you'll see that actually you can use an integer, but that's only if you know what each different enum integer equivalent is. And even this documentation doesn't actually say what the equivalents are. Let's see if I tap on this, this might actually say it. Yeah, so there we go. It says negative two, negative two. That's really a weird number to pick, isn't it? Let's see what um, this one is page sheet. Page sheet is one and form sheet form sheet is two okay so they have some numbers here and you have to click on each one to get the associated number and then you can go in here in your app and plug in that number right here so as a comment you'd probably want to comment which enum value you used but we can actually use iOS types right in our TypeScript code by using TNS platform declarations, which are the iOS and Android declarations that give us the types in TypeScript that we can use right here. Now I have a separate video on this channel on how to actually get set up with that and how to add the platform declarations and all the adjustments in your project that you need to do. So if you haven't seen that video, check that out. 
basically what this will allow you to do is use things like UI modal presentation style right in your TypeScript code, and it'll give you code completion. So you can just pick whichever one you want here. So this actually gives you the number right there in the comments. So automatic is negative two, blur over full screen is eight, current context is three. You see all the enum numbers listed right there next to the enum name. But since we have the platform declarations already, we don't have to use numbers, we can just use the enums. For example, I don't know, let's pick one here. Let's pick automatic and save that. And let's try this out. Well, it looks like it's the same thing to me. I don't know. Is, does anybody see a difference there? All right, let's try something else. Let's try full screen. Now, full screen seems like the default. Let's try form sheet. All right, form sheet. Well, it looks exactly the same to me also. You know what? In fact, I went through all these and they all look exactly the same except for none. None actually crashes the app. And the one I really wanted to show you is blur over full screen. This one actually works and it does make a difference. And this makes it look like that which is not that slide up effect, but it's a blur in effect. It's kind of like a fade in, but a growing fade in, like a scaling fade in. So I wouldn't call it blur because I don't really see a blur effect going on, but I do see a scaling effect going on and a fading effect going on. So they called it blur over full screen, but it's still a really cool option for you to use if you need that. Now, about a week ago, I came up with this other video that allows you to get the tap coordinates because normally the tap gesture doesn't give you the coordinates of where you tapped, which is a bummer, right? Sometimes you want to know exactly where you tapped. And in this video right here, you actually get to know exactly the X and Y coordinates of where the person tapped. And it involves using native code to do that. So check that video out if you haven't seen that already. Here are some of the comments that you left me for that video. Mohan says, it's awesome, sir. Please give the deep link tutorial in native script. Hmm. That's a really good idea, Mohan. Thanks. I don't even know how I would do that for NativeScript Core. In NativeScript Angular, it's pretty obvious because you just have your route. But in NativeScript Core, I'll have to think about that and come up with an interesting way to do that. Sergey Bukriev says, awesome as usual. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Sergey, and good seeing you again. And Mark Broomfield says, looking forward to part two. Thanks. Guess what, folks? Part two is actually already out. Part two is where I show an image map so go check that out as well. Those two tutorials are kind of tied together. All right, if you're not subscribed yet, do subscribe to the channel and you can ask me questions on Twitter or down below in the comments. I'm at Digitalix on Twitter and in the comments, I'm just Alexander Ziskin in the comments. All right, I'll see you in the next tutorial and happy native scripting.